It's truly a pleasure to be here to give you an overview of uh, the uh, emerging opportunities in immunotherapy with a particular focus on the development history of uh, Provenge and the progress that we've made in commercializing uh, this novel product. Uh, to the extent that I'll be making any forward-looking statements, I'd encourage you to follow the filings that we make with the Securities and Exchange Commission for a full discussion and disclosure about uh, our business. And uh, to talk about uh, Provenge, um, it's uh, the first autologous cellular immunotherapy approved by the FDA. And as Stephen mentioned, it was approved uh, in 2010, April 29th. And as a personal aside, April 29th is my mother's birthday. And earlier that same month, my daughter had given birth to our first grandchild. So in the same month that uh, my daughter brought the Erdahl uh, family into a new generation, the FDA approval of Provenge brought the treatment of cancer into a new era with uh, active immunotherapy. And Provenge is indicated for the treatment of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic metastatic castrate-resistant hormone refractory prostate cancer. And the best way to understand uh, what the product is and how it works is to think about uh, the product as having two key raw materials. The first is a recombinant antigen. We call it the antigen delivery cassette, which in the case of Provenge is composed of uh, the antigen prostatic acid phosphatase, which is found only in the prostate, and it's linked to a cytokine granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. And it's this combination and this fusion protein that actually targets uh, antigen presenting cells, activates those cells, and leads to the processing on the antigen and the education of the T cell compartment. It's a well characterized uh, antigen. It's manufactured as a recombinant protein. And it leads to the uh, uh, well-characterized immune responses that we can measure. And it's a cassette, and the idea behind the cassette is that we can uh, implement uh, this approach to the treatment of other cancers by switching out uh, the antigen and using other antigens. And I'll talk briefly about that as we get into a pipeline slide. The second key raw material is the antigen presenting cell that we isolate from the peripheral blood. And so we start that process on the first day with a patient undergoing a leukapheresis procedure. We collect the white blood cells from that procedure, which contain the peripheral blood mononuclear cells, including the antigen presenting cells. And this uh, fraction of cells is uh, shipped to a dendrion manufacturing facility where we set them up in culture uh, with the recombinant fusion antigen. And over the course of the 40 hours that we cultivate uh, these cells with the antigen, we'll see that those cells become activated. We measure that activation by the upregulation of markers on the cell surface, uh, including one known as ICAM-1 or CD54, and that's our basis of our potency assay. And we also find that over this period of time, the antigen is actually taken up by the cells. It's processed by those cells, and then the epitopes uh, specific to prostatic acid phosphatase are loaded on the MHC class II molecules expressed on the surface uh, of these um, activated uh, antigen-loaded antigen-presenting cells. At the conclusion of that culture period, the cells are washed, and then they're shipped back to the uh, infusion center or the physician's office where it's infused into the patient in an outpatient intravenous uh, one-hour infusion. And it's within the patient that these antigen-loaded activated antigen-presenting cells engage the T-cell compartment of the immune system and educate uh, the T-cell compartment to recognize uh, this antigen as foreign and to ultimately uh, control uh, the disease. This procedure is repeated two additional times so that at the uh, conclusion of a four-week four uh, period of time, the patient will have undergone three leukophoreses, followed approximately three days later by an infusion of antigen-loaded activated cells. And so the whole procedure is complete within four to six weeks, and then the patient can go off and uh, golf and enjoy life um, uh, uh, in the treatment of his disease. Now, we, uh, the data on which uh, those of you who follow the, the ProBench development story know that it's had a lot of ups and downs over the years. Um, we first uh, filed a license application with the FDA in 2006 uh, based on a, the results from a small study, D9901, that had shown a really remarkable survival benefit uh, in uh, the patient uh, population that we were studying. And the data on which we ultimately won approval of the product was the IMPACT trial, uh, which was very similar in design to that original trial looking at the treatment of men with uh, late-stage prostate cancer, assigning uh, men to either receive Provenge or to receive control, which was a form of uh, they received uh, uh, APCs that had not been cultured uh, with the um, recombinant fusion antigen. The study design also had in it a, an opportunity for patients who had been assigned to receive the control cells to actually uh, ultimately receive a form of Cipula cell T in a salvage protocol after progression in the disease uh, so that the estimate, the benefit that we see here of 25.8-month um, uh, median survival with a 4.1-month uh, survival benefit compared to control we believe is a conservative estimate of the overall benefit that we're seeing uh, in this uh, population of patients. But the results we got from the IMPACT trial were remarkably consistent with what we saw in a previous trial where 
uh, we had seen a, a median survival of 25.9 months and a 4.5 month uh, median survival advantage uh, in that uh, patient population. The other way of quantifying the clinical benefit that we can measure in these patients is to actually look at survival predicted at a different time interval. So if you look at three years, for example, you see that 32% uh, of patients would be predicted to be alive who had been assigned to receive Provenge compared to 23% for an almost 40% improvement uh, in sur predicted survival uh, at three years, which is a meaningful uh, clinical benefit uh, in this patient population. And it's accompanied by a safety profile, which is really uh, uh, very much what you'd like to see in an oncology-type study. The side effects that we see most frequently uh, in the Provenge arm over the control arm are chills, fever, uh, back pain, nausea, things that are associated with the activation of the immune system. They tend to be relatively mild, grade one, grade two, and relatively short in duration so that we see um, uh, them resolve within 24 to 48 hours after the infusion of the antigen-loaded activated cells. So it's a treatment benefit profile that is uh, very attractive uh, for treating this disease. And it also fits within uh, the treatment paradigm that is a dramatic change to what it had been prior to the approval of Provenge. Provenge approval brought into the treatment paradigm the concept of symptomatology in men with uh, late-stage prostate cancer. So if you look at the continuum of, of uh, prostate cancer, local therapy is when the disease is first diagnosed. It would be, uh, these would be men that would be treated with prostatectomy or with um, uh, radiation, uh, beam radiation uh, therapy. And in 60 to 70 percent of cases, it will actually cure the disease. But it's in the 30 to 40 percent of men who have not had the disease uh, controlled at that stage that would be subject to some form of castration hormone therapy. And this will hold uh, uh, the production of testosterone by the gonads down to minimal levels and will actually control the progression of the disease for some years, at which time it invariably becomes castrate resistant, and you'll see the disease progress ultimately to uh, lead to the uh, death of the individual. And Provenge is actually a, a drug that is indicated for men with asymptomatic to minimally symptomatic disease. So it's clearly uh, moving into that uh, treatment uh, stage uh, prior to the use of chemotherapy, which is the only uh, previously approved uh, therapy that was available for these men. And that tended to be something that only was introduced when men developed more significant symptoms in the course of the disease. So you now have uh, uh, men that are being primarily seen by the urologist. Uh, there's now a treatment that uh, can be used for treating men uh, that have a castrate-resistant disease but are still uh, asymptomatic in their disease. And we see Provenge as really forming the uh, foundation of care in this uh, patient population. It's actually been a banner uh, 18 months for men with late-stage prostate cancer. We saw last year the approval of Jeftana uh, in 2010 actually for uh, it's another chemotherapy agent that's used for patients who failed docetaxel therapy. And then Zytiga is a hormonal agent, actually, uh, that's been proven uh, to be useful in patients who failed docetaxel therapy. And so you have where you only had one arrow in the quiver for the oncologist with uh, docetaxel uh, with, with its approval in 2004, you now have four, all of which have been approved uh, based on showing that uh, patients can extend their survival by receiving these new agents. So I think we're very much in an active phase now of development looking at how these agents in this setting uh, will be uh, sequenced. And we think Provenge will form a foundation uh, for care. Over the course of 2012, we'll be seeing some uh, new data uh, presented at upcoming medical meetings, including an analysis of the overall survival benefit uh, that accounts for the crossover that gives um, another estimate for how uh, the survival benefit is meaningful in this setting. And the uh, studies in neoadjuvant, uh, uh, which are patients uh, who have just been newly diagnosed with prostate cancer, they've elected to have prostatectomy, and they received Provenge prior to the prostatectomy. And one of the primary endpoints in the study is to look at the site of the original tumor uh, for the identification of the parts of the immune system that are involved in uh, treating the disease. So clearly, over the course of the last year, uh, we got approval in 2010. Uh, we also uh, saw uh, the Center for Medicare Services uh, give us a national coverage assessment uh, that was engaged uh, over the course of 2010. And we now have a national coverage decision. We have a Q code so that the reimbursement for the treatment uh, uh, with Provenge is less than 30 days for physicians. And we're seeing that we've overcome uh, the reimbursement hurdle uh, that we'd seen over the course of the first year uh, after launch. We're recognizing that we're uh, promoting this drug to two different uh, physician populations, both the urologist and the medical oncologist, and have developed messaging that are specific for urology and medical oncology and are educating uh, urologists on uh, earlier screening uh, to get the most uh, greatest benefit for the treatment uh, with Provenge. 
we had a significant year last year on the regulatory front where when we got approval in 2010, we got approval uh, with our manufacturing facility that had been built out in its first phase in uh, New Jersey. And over the course of 2011, we saw the expanded uh, uh, capacity in New Jersey approved. We saw the uh, plants in Los Angeles and Atlanta approved. So we had significant uh, regulatory advances that we uh, made over the course of 2011 and have maintained a high success rate for the manufacturer pro bench. And in 2012, we'll be really focusing on reducing our cost of goods. It's a high labor uh, touch product. Uh, and this will primarily be achieved by volume growth as we see the market uh, expand uh, over the course of this year and through operational efficiencies uh, that we'll gain by having all our three manufacturing facilities up and running. And then over a longer period of time, there will be opportunities to actually see automation uh, come into uh, play for both the testing and for the manufacture of this product that will lead to uh, other advances. Um, regarding the global launch of the product, we've made significant progress in actually filing our marketing authorization with the European authorities at the end of last year. The castrate-resistant prostate cancer population in Europe is very similar to what it is here in the United States. Uh, there's slightly higher incidence there, uh, but its treatment is still seen by the same physician populations in urology and medical oncology. And while the reimbursement uh, environment is more challenging there, uh, we think we uh, expect to make good progress on that front. And we're also exploring uh, opportunities uh, to market this product in Japan uh, and plan to start regulatory discussions over the course of this year. As I mentioned in my earlier remarks, ProVenge is just the uh, beginning. Uh, built on this uh, same uh, form of technology, we have other product candidates. DN24-02 actually targets HER2 new and is in clinical trials enrolling now uh, for patients with HER2 positive invasive bladder cancer. Uh, behind that, we have target antigens CA9 and CEA that allow us to get into other malignancies uh, beyond that, into colon cancer and renal cell uh, carcinomas. Uh, so we have um, a strong balance sheet, uh, more than $600 million of cash on hand. We disclosed earlier this week, uh, Mitch Gold, uh, at the JPM conference that our gross revenues for quarter four last year were $82 million for the uh, annualized uh, uh, for last year of $228 million. Uh, and we anticipate modest uh, quarter over quarter growth of ProVenge sales and expect cash flow break even for the product when we get annual run rates of approximately $500 million in revenue. Uh, so clearly ProVenge is the first uh, autologous cellular immunotherapy in the marketplace. Uh, if you look at just the sales for last year, it would fall in the, one of the top 10 oncology launches based on that first full year of revenues. Uh, we're increasing, uh, seeing increasing interest on the physicians in urology and medical oncology and are proud of uh, having established ProVenge as a foundation of care and are leading uh, in the emerging field of immuno-oncology. I'd like to close by uh, first, uh, we have a motto at Dendrion of putting patients first. We feel that if we do that, we'll uh, make uh, good business decisions, but it's also the patients that we rely on to have the courage to enroll in the kinds of studies that I described that provide us with the opportunity to actually see drugs like ProVenge get approved. Thank you.